Hello and welcome to another calculus instructional video. This video is about how to find the limit of a function at infinity. So, up at the top you'll notice we have a very nice graph of the function x over x minus 1 and we're going to be taking the limit of this function as it approaches infinity. So imagine that this line kept extending way out that way forever and ever and ever. What would, the, what would the value of the function be at that point? Well, let's take a look. It seems to be approaching 1 as we move out to the right, but let's take an actual look at the function itself to be sure. We can see that the function is x over x minus 1. So let's take a look at the substitution method, and let's plug infinity in for those values of x. So we'll get infinity over infinity minus 1. Those sound pretty much like the exact same values to me. We can basically disregard any value of a constant because it's going to be pretty much nothing compared to infinity. So now we have infinity over infinity, which we can reduce to 1. So the limit of this function as x approaches infinity is 1. So things that you want to look for when you're looking for limits at infinity are ratios of powers. So on the top maybe you have an x squared, on the bottom you have an x. When you plug infinity in, you'll get an infinity squared over infinity, which reduces to infinity. And that means the limit is that it goes to infinity. Another thing to watch out for is maybe you've got an x over an x squared. When you plug this in, you'll get infinity over infinity squared, which reduces to 1 over infinity, which reduces to 0. So you could say that the limit of that function is 0 as x approaches infinity. Basically, what you want to do is find the highest power of x on the top and the highest power of x on the bottom of the fraction and compare them. So let's take a look at this in the example. Number one, we have the limit as x approaches infinity of 3x squared plus 5 over 2x squared minus 6. Now, when we plug infinity in using the substitution method, that 5 and that negative 6 are going to be pretty inconsequential. So let's rewrite this as the limit as x approaches infinity of 3x squared over 2x squared which then we can substitute infinity in and get 3 times infinity squared over 2 times infinity squared. And you'll notice that we have an infinity on the top and an inf infinity squared on the top and an infinity squared on the bottom which cancel giving us a limit of 3 halves. That's basically the same thing that you would do when you were simplifying any other equation. You look for like terms to cancel on the top and the bottom. Now, let's take a look at example number two. We're taking the limit as x approaches infinity of 7x squared plus 2x plus 1 over 3x. You'll notice that our largest term of x on, our largest power of x on top is a 7x squared. The largest power of x on the bottom is a 3x. So let's pull those over and we'll put 7x squared over 3x which, when we plug in infinity, we'll get to a 7 times infinity squared over a 3 times infinity. You'll notice we can cancel an infinity on the top and on the bottom, and that will bring us to 7 times infinity over 3, which still means we have an infinity on the top, which means that the limit of this goes to infinity.